attention all facility personnel. Protocol Salatum has been activated. Please prepare for emergency evacuation at this time. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Scanning. Control. Manipulate scientific data. Take over. Blast control. World government. Shut down infrastructure. Ship everything to China. Just look at this person. Access granted. Attention all bottom side QSER personnel. We have received signal to begin the protocol Salatum detonation sequence. Warheads will be primed in T minus 40 seconds. All key serve personnel. The warhead is ready for detonation. All bottom side facility personnel, please evacuate to the Tartarus zone immediately. I repeat, please evacuate to the Tartarus zone immediately. Warhead detonation in T minus 200 seconds. 
I repeat, warhead detonation in T-minus 200 seconds. from the United States of America. The BBC has just received confirmed reports that the Crown Jewel facility of the Quantum Corporation has just suffered a catastrophic loss. The Madison Research Facility, located just east of New Haven, Connecticut, engaged with their site administrators in newly obtained classified data called Protocol Salatum, which is the detonation of a one megaton nuclear bomb located roughly one kilometer underground in the event of a data breach. That's right. The detonation of this warhead marks the first nuclear detonation in history whose purpose was not under the guise of testing. In fact, this detonation marks the first time a nuclear detonation has ever occurred in a densely populated New England region, leaving questions as to the scale of possible ground soil and water contamination. Historically, the most prominent nuclear tests occurred at the Nevada test site, with temporary test sites established along the conterminous United States and off in the Pacific Ocean. Areas all chosen as they were far from densely populated areas and therefore reduced the chances of civilians contracting illnesses related to testing. As mentioned earlier, analysts were able to ascertain the purpose of Protocol Salatin as being an emergency protocol to destroy the facility in the event of a critical data breach, the data being of a lab division called Epsilon 8. Epsilon 8, per Quantum Corporation's description, is a human biological testing and research lab 
with the aimed goal of reverse engineering the capabilities of living humans. The BBC has obtained a full trove of documents regarding all of Epsilon 8's operations, who they tested on, and how they operated under the nose of the government. Testing range from various different branches of biosciences, mostly having to do with neurology, cardiology, and virology. While we will not discuss the more gruesome aspects of the Epsilon 8 program on this news report, mild experiments range from mind control sleeper agents to CRISPR based genetic engineering. Overall, there were 152 subjects named on the subject roster, most of them stemming from a lower class background and half of them presently deceased. The names of all the Epsilon 8 members were also included in this database, implicating Quantum Corporation CEO James McCarthy and a plethora of staff from the now former Madison Research Center, such as Dr. Martin Miller, Dr. Robert Brenner, and Dr. Helene Kaiser. As such, members of the Epsilon 8 program were apprehended and detained by federal authorities. The United States Attorney General, Edwin Meese, issuing a press release stating that the Department of Justice would file a criminal suit against members of Epsilon 8 for high treason against the United States, conspiracy against the United States, 43 counts of second degree murder, 26 counts of voluntary manslaughter, 102 cases of kidnapping, of fraud and criminal malfeasance. According to sources within the US government, a trial is scheduled to take place next week through the Federal District Court in Connecticut. This court case could mark the first potential treason conviction case since 1945's Kramer v. the United States. Epsilon 8, according to the database leak, commenced operations around the time the Madison Research Center was built, culminating various different experiments in various staff members, names of whom have all been identified. Epsilon 8 used accounting tricks to throw government subsidy money into a black budget, accumulating millions to almost billions of dollars in funding. An annual funding sheet dating back to 1972 detailing an exponential growth of program funding. According to the US government and even the Epsilon 8 database, the government had zero knowledge of the existence of the Epsilon 8 program, with Epsilon 8 members stating that the laboratory was intentionally hidden in the deepest part of the facility to quote, deter employees or government officials from stumbling upon it, end quote. We'll have more for you after the break. Warhead detonation, and the facility has been lost. 